Mark is uh, heading up Wednesday for us. And it's going to be uh, his day and his program, and we are very excited to have him. So let's give uh, Mark Harrington a warm welcome. One of the first Show the Truth tours began, and um, that was really my introduction to the use of graphic imagery as it relates to abortion. By the way, I want to lose the term graphic imagery. What it is is abortion victim photography. Because graphic imagery means a lot of things to a lot of people. And unfortunately, I think it mischaracterizes really what these photos represent, which are the victims of abortion. There's no better way to represent the victims of abortion than through abortion victim photography or video. Short of actually witnessing the act of abortion. This is the closest thing we can get to it. Uh, when I was in Cincinnati recently, when we did our outreach on Fountain Square, and I'm going to show a, a short video of that, I had an interview with WLW, which is the big one in Cincinnati. It's one of the largest uh, uh, radio stations in the region. And the interviewer asked me, he goes, how much louder can you yell with this imagery? Because we use the Jumbotron, and you'll get, you'll get a picture of that early uh, tonight. What's next? If this doesn't work, what are you going to do next to get people's attention? Are you going to use a hologram? That's what he said. Hologram? Can we do that? Hey, good idea. What are you going to do? And I said, if America does not respond to the video and photographs of the victims, then I'm afraid it might be over for us. Plain and simple. If we can witness the killing, watch it in ha happening in progress, and not respond to that and repent, then maybe it's too late for our country. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Thank goodness. So, created equal. Created equal. The name obviously explains our mission. That we're created in God's image. In Genesis chapter 3, it says, Man was made in the image of God, and in the image of God he was created. Male and female, he was created. We don't shy away from the gospel. We don't shy away from the truths of Scripture that if we are not created equal, then there's no difference between us and any other creature crawling along the earth. That's what gives us our human dignity. That's what gives us our, our, uh, our, our sanctity. That's what sets us apart from every other created uh, creature on the earth. And we cannot back away from that, you understand? You can't. A lot of folks with the pro-life movement say, well, you know, we don't want to bring the Bible into this. We don't want to bring God into this. I said, oh, wait, hold, on, hold on a minute. The science and the philosophy and the logic is on our side. Is it not? And I keep telling people, I say, it's the pro-abortion movement that's anti-science, not us. We've got the science on our, on, our, uh, on our side. We've got the logic and the philosophy. All the arguments are on our side. But you can only get so far with some people. You ever notice that? You can spell it all out. You can give them the science and all the great arguments that we have. You can even show the video. And some people won't move beyond that. That's where I believe it's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. And hard change only comes through God, and it comes through the gospel. So we need to be unashamedly to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as well. So we're created equal. Um, equality, it's the big thing now, right? Marriage equality, they all talk about. It's the big thing. The left is for equality, supposedly. The right, no, not so much. Americans are for gender equality, racial equality, now supposedly marriage equality. 
But what about equality between the born and the pre-born? What about that? You see, when you put this argument in the framework of equality, they listen. They begin to listen. On college campuses, they begin to listen. On high school campuses, they listen. Because Americans are supposed to be for equality, understand? We're supposed to be about that, right? If you put it in, if you just compare the born to the pre-born, they get it. They may not totally get, you know, become 100% pro-life at the moment, but they understand our argument. It's that simple. It's that simple. This is a debate based on equality. The born to the pre-born. Abortion is simply age-based discrimination. That's why we wear shirts that it brought back this word, ageism. Americans don't even know what it means. <laughs> like, What's ageism? Well, that opens up the door for a great conversation, doesn't it? Yeah, ages. Discrimination based on age. Discriminating because they're younger than we are. So we're all created equal. Dr. King said, in the last speech before he was assassinated, he asked that the American people would, quote, be true to what they wrote down on paper in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident to all men are created equal, and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among those the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's a reason why the founders listed it first, because all other rights come from the right to life. They understood that. And that's all we're making the case for, equality for the pre-born. So it's time. Albuquerque, it's time. It's time for cities and states and local jurisdictions to say to the federal government, we gave you the opportunity to end the scourge of abortion. You didn't get it done. You didn't get it done. Roe v. Wade is still, you know, out there. And it's time for the states and the communities and the cities like Albuquerque to say, if you're not going to do it, we're going to do it. Right. And it's happening all across America right now. If you're watching, it's happening. States, cities are beginning to say, listen, we're not going to wait around for a pro-life president, although that's a good thing. We're not going to wait around for the United States Supreme Court to change in our direction so that we might be able to reverse Roe v. Wade, although that would be a great thing. We're not going to wait for that. It's time for the local communities to take ownership, and that's what's happening here in Albuquerque. God bless everyone who is from Albuquerque here tonight. God bless you. It's going to happen here. You are setting precedent across this country by this ballot uh, measure. All right, video. Let me show you a couple real quick here. This is not my computer, so... Um, let's see, how... Remember this? Yes. Troy, Jeff, you'll remember the bumper sticker that said, visualize abortionists on trial. Yeah, we, we didn't have to visualize it, did we? Right. We saw it that day, Kermit Gosnell being convicted of killing babies. It was a first. Now, it didn't go as far as what I'd like. I know Troy would definitely agree with that. But that was the beginning of the end of the abortion movement. And today, in this city, Albuquerque, there are three abortionists who are going to be run out of town with this late-term abortion ban. They're going to be the next ones, and the next ones, and the next ones, four of them, until we end this thing. Okay. Now, just recently, we were at Fountain Square, and we began to use a Jumbotron TV. And if a picture's worth a thousand words, a video's worth a million words. And so what we did was we took this downtown. We've done it at the March for Life. We've done it at the Walk for Life on the West Coast. And we played these videos. Now, the video I really want to show, which was the coverage of the uh, 
uh, of the event from the news media there isn't going to play on this computer. So we're going to play a clip that we put together. Go ahead. This is the Jumbotron in Cincinnati about two weeks ago with our Justice Riders. By doing that, you're, you're, you're taking back the veneer, you're pulling back, and you're, you're actually shedding more truth than what you could do in words alone. You couldn't do it with, with words alone. And it, it's my contention, and of course this has been said many times before by one of our predecessors here, that abortionists forfeit the right to a normal life. <coughs> Period. By doing what they do, they forfeit the right to live a normal life. And Gosnell, we got justice with Gosnell, and there'll be more. But there'll be men and women who kill babies who elude justice. And in some way, we can take some satisfaction, and I don't mean that pejoratively, by bringing justice to these abortionists, by connecting them to the crime that they commit. And the best way to do that is with the imagery. And so, what we're gonna do tomorrow morning and throughout the week, is we're gonna flyer the neighborhoods around the abortion center itself. So that those folks who live in that community will understand that this has been going on there. And it continues to go on there. The campaign this week is, do you know? And do you care? Well, we're going to make sure they know tomorrow and the days uh, ongoing, if necessary. And we'll find out if they care. Because when they open up their front door and see this sitting on their porch, they will know 
what's going on in their own communities. And of course, these are really nearby the, the, the actual abortion center itself. So they will know. The question is, will they care? Uh, we've been doing this in Columbus for a while now, and of course, you know, I get a lot of e email and voicemail that are unhappy with us, of course. And one of the main concerns is, well, what about the children? What about other people seeing this? And I have to say this, and I wrote this to, the, to a young lady the other day. I said, this is like waking up in Dachau, Germany, with soot on your car windshield, and knowing where that soot came from. It came from the crematorium down the road, where they've been burning Jews, and you haven't done anything about it. These postcards are the soot of the abortion center that they have been permitting to operate right down the road. Now you'd think people in Germany, would they see that soot, they'd do something about it, but they didn't. Not a lot's changed, has it? Well, we're gonna try to change that tomorrow, starting tomorrow, and I'm sure we'll be giving out information on how that goes. But tomorrow morning, we're gonna be doing the Killers Among Us project which is meant to expose these abortionists to the communities in which they operate. We call it Killers Among Us because they're among us and they're not known, generally. Um, they could be in the supermarket line with you. For that matter, they could worship at your church. They could be at your kids' baseball games, and you don't know who they are. Well, you're gonna know now. And so this is the flyer we're gonna be handing out tomorrow um, in the community around the abortion center. So, uh, Proverbs 28, 17, if you have a Bible, let me read that, and then I'll finish, and we'll turn it over to Troy here. This is kind of the uh, theme verse for this uh, project and it says this a man who is laden or covered with the guilt of human blood let no one support him he will be a fugitive unto death the Bible says no one should support a man who is covered with innocent blood and he should be a fugitive unto death well tomorrow begins the effort to bring these abortionists to justice. Thank you, God bless you, I look forward to being with you this week.